Space might be a place that inspires wonder, but many aren't aware of the dark, terrifying side of its void. In the pursuit of knowledge and science, there have been various tragedies and heartbreaks. Just ask the students, children, and husband of Krista McAuliffe. She was a high school teacher, the first one that was chosen to go to space, and one of the seven crew members of the space shuttle Challenger crew. Her involvement in the space program was supposed to garner public attention for the American space program. It was a dream come true for her, an inspiration to her students and to the public at large. Just imagine that, the amount of media attention it succeeded in pulling. Various high schools even made their students watch the launch live. Sadly, on January 8, 1986, just 73 seconds after the space shuttle took off, low temperatures of the launch initiated a series of structural breakdowns. That translated into the shuttle traveling at a velocity that allowed aerodynamic forces to rip the shuttle to shreds. Literally. Do you know what's wild and jarring? Well, there are many things. The first is that it was avoidable. Its engineers warned NASA about the temperature. Also, after the shuttle was ripped apart, the rockets continued to fly around in that cartoon-like manner. Remember that kids around the country were watching. There's also the fact that the crew probably survived the disintegration of the shuttle. The impact of the crash, on the other hand, well, it's freaking terrifying to think about. But at least, this one happened relatively within the Earth's atmosphere. There have been 19 spaceflight-related deaths, and only three of these went outside the Kármán line, the line that divides the Earth's atmosphere from space. This was the Soyuz 2 disaster, and it's as chilling as it is sad. Back in 1971, the space race was still in full swing, and the Soviet Union was trying to show the U.S. who was boss. They temporarily did when they launched the world's first space station, Solyut 1. And three months later, they sent three cosmonauts on the space shuttle, Soyuz 11, to do some research and all that stuff. Now we get to the eerie part. The rocket landed safely back on Earth, but when the hatch was open, they found all three cosmonauts dead. Nope, aliens actually didn't cause this. Rather, here's what went down. A faulty air vent opened on re-entry, and it caused the atmosphere within the shuttle to depressurize. None of the space dudes had their suits on, so they ran out of air and rested peacefully just minutes before the landing. The Soviets had their fair share of accidents during those times. And this isn't even the only spaceflight tragedy that dealt with a shuttle named Soyuz. Soyuz 1 was a story just as tragic as Soyuz 11. Vladimir Komarov was your typical Soviet guy, intelligent, sharp, and dedicated to his country. He was even friends with Yuri Gagarin, the first man to be in space. They worked for the Soviet space mission together. Little did they know, this was going to end one day in tragedy. Check this out. It all started with a celebration, the 50th anniversary anniversary of the communist revolution. The Soyuz 1 flight was supposed to be launched as a way to commemorate the day's event. When the space shuttle was inspected, Yuri and the other engineers found about 203 structural defects. Imagine that! 203 defects for something as delicate as a space mission. Leaders that cared about their men would have shut the place down immediately. Unfortunately, the then-Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev and the other superiors involved didn't give a hoot. The launch was to go on as planned. Yuri and Kolarov fought for the honor of flying in a suicide mission. They wanted to save each other, you see. And at that point, I guess they both wanted to prove a point to their leaders. Brave men. To be honest, if I were in their shoes, I would have cowed out. Kolarov got to fly one last time. Before he did, he asked that he be given an open casket funeral. This dude with guts of steel wanted the Soviet leaders to see exactly what they did to him. The shuttle launched. Things went well. But then, on its descent to Earth, the parachute system failed, forcing the shuttle to collapse and crash to the floor in a ball of flames. And do you know what makes this story all the more conflicting? Kolarov's final recordings were basically him cursing out his superiors. Who made him fly the ship? He died, of course. I have huge respect for this guy. The Soviets took cosmonaut lives more seriously after that. They haven't even had a space-related fatality since 1971. America, on the other hand, even had tragedies of that sort as recently as 2003, the year of the Columbia space disaster. 
Yep, it turns out space incompetency isn't just limited to one specific country. On February 1st, the Columbia shuttle was making its re-entry to Earth when all of a sudden it broke apart and slaughtered all seven astronauts on board. I know you're probably now wondering how dangerous this space thing is, especially if this is your first time hearing all of this. Don't worry, the fatality rate of space-related journeys is about 2 to 3 percent. It's not a large proportion, but it's still a considerable one. But I digress. The Columbia incident was directly consequential in NASA's retirement of its shuttle fleet in 2011. And while they aren't doing anything ambitious in that regard, for now, they're working on a new project called Artemis. So here's the deal. When the break apart was investigated, it was found that the problem started when the Columbia shuttle launched 16 days prior. Some insulating foam had broken off from a fuel tank, and this thing was poking a hole in the left wing of the shuttle itself. This is the moronically funny part. This foam had come off a lot in previous launches, so NASA thought, no biggie. This time, however, the hole in the wing caused the air to leak out, and this made the shuttle break apart on re-entry. Do you understand what this implies? NASA knew about the foam issue, but they did jack all about it. When this was found out, Congress was all over them. They were hung out to dry in front of the country and in front of the world. It received a ton of negative press, but nothing could bring back those brave astronauts that had died in the accident. It just goes to show those of you who want to be astronauts someday, you could do everything right, everything you were trained to do, and some idiot's mistake would still cause you to hurtle to your death at speeds close to Mach 1. Alright, don't mind me, I'm just being judgy. But you should recognize how dangerous this job is and act accordingly. Another such accident is the Apollo 1 debacle which caused the Apollo space program to end as quickly as it started. At this point, you probably think the government shuffles tax dollars to NASA to fry human beings in those shuttles. Bear in mind that there are more success stories than failures like these. Safety flaws in the Apollo 1 design were pointed out and ignored, and this led to a fire in a simulated launch that engulfed the cabin, and it killed all three astronauts on board. In another case, a stray spark fire burned all the oxygen on board and subsequently suffocated all three astronauts. They would have gotten out in time, but the design of the door made it too slow to open. It's sad, but space programs learn from their mistakes. Shuttles being designed are now safer and easier to handle. Those who want to become astronauts can now do so without fear. And don't worry, so far there have been no astronauts lost in the void of space. This concludes our video on the saddest, tragic space-related accidents. We hope that the events in this video never repeat themselves.